Welcome everyone to Catholic Sunday Scriptures in Context. Catholic Sunday Scriptures is a presentation of the Augustinian Order as well as St. Paul Parish, which where I am the pastor. And uh, we want to never forget the people who passed on September 11th. Uh, and I think the best way to honor them is to pray for peace, because with peace there will be no more violence, no more war, no more terrorism. Today we focus on the 24th Sunday in Ordinary Time, September 10th, 1122. This reading comes from the book of Exodus. The Lord said to Moses, Go down at once to your people whom you brought out of the land of Egypt, for they have become depraved. They have soon turned aside from the way I pointed out to them, making for themselves a molten calf and worshiping it sacrificing to it and crying out, This is your God, O Israel, who brought you out of the land of Egypt. I see how stiff-necked this people is, continued the Lord to Moses. Let me alone then, that my wrath may blaze up against them to consume them. Then I will make of you a great nation. But Moses implored the Lord his God, saying, Why, O Lord, should your wrath blaze up against your own people, whom you brought out of the land of Egypt? with such great power and with so strong a hand. Remember your servants, Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, and how you swore to them by your own self, saying, I will make your descendants as numerous as the stars in the sky. And all this land that I promised, I will give your descendants as their perpetual heritage. So the Lord relented in the punishment he had threatened to inflict on his people. A couple things to note here. At first, uh, when God is speaking to Moses, he talks about them as your people, whom you brought out of the land of Egypt. And a little bit later that we see over here, Moses says to him, why, O Lord, should your wrath blaze up against your own people? He, you know, there's who's, whose son is it, the mom or the dad, right? He calls them stiff-necked people, stiff-necked uh, was really a reference to an ox because that's why they had the yoke around their neck, you know, and the yoke would never um, break because the necks of the ox were so strong. And also to get them to do anything other than go straight was tough. And that's where this reference here in Hebrew to a stiff neck people, those who are like an ox. And at the end, we see how the Lord relented in the punishment he had threatened to inflict on his people. And, you know, we understand this is the Lord is being merciful, uh, even though he can be angry. The God, our God, is a merciful God. So the people felt abandoned, even though at the very moment God was working for their benefit. Moses had been up on the mountain for 40 days and they didn't know what had happened to him. And so in the meantime, they uh, coaxed Aaron to make this... Um, bull god, this uh, golden um, instrument. So bull worship was very common in the Middle East. Many nations had. They saw the bull as one of the strongest of all animals, also with its reproductive power. And uh, as we mentioned, whom you brought out, your own people, this going back and forth, whose people are they? And God is so much more anything than that human hands can make. That's why in Jewish faith, there are never any representations of God. Even in our own Catholic Christian faith, it's very rare in a church to find an image of God because God is so much beyond our um, anything that we could possibly create. Um, a calf is used here, and usually in this case, it's a derisive diminutive, uh, that even though you tried to create a bull, you only up you only ended up creating a calf. And God relents, the covenant is renewed, and mercy is proclaimed. Our second reading comes from the first letter of Timothy. Beloved, I am grateful to him who has strengthened me, Jesus Christ our Lord, because he considered me trustworthy in appointing me to the ministry. I was once a blasphemer and a persecutor and arrogant, but I have been mercifully treated because I acted out of ignorance in my unbelief. Indeed, the grace of our Lord has been abundant, along with the faith and love that are in Jesus Christ. 
This saying is trustworthy and deserves full acceptance. Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. Of these I am the foremost, but for that reason I was mercifully treated so that in me, as the foremost, Christ Jesus might display all his patience as an example for those who would come to believe in him for everlasting life. To the King of Ages, incorruptible, invisible, the only God, honor and glory forever and ever. Amen. So this letter to Timothy, we believe, was not written by Paul. We can tell that by the language that was used, the words, the vocabulary, which doesn't match much of what Paul wrote in the authentic letters. And also, um, this letter presumes the organization of a church, which certainly was not the case at the time of Paul. Paul was building churches. Um, so here, you know, some of the highlights, it seems that they are references to Paul to try to show, to give authenticity to it. And they know the story of Paul and how he had been a persecutor and killed Christians and how he was mercifully treated. Um, this probably is some followers of Paul. It probably comes from the school of Paul. I don't think they were trying to bamboozle the people, but this letter wasn't written to a particular church. It was directed to a person, which is again, rare for Paul. He would always write his letters to a church. So this is one of the three pastoral epistles. Um, it is addressed to an individual rather than a church community. The message is really from one pastor to another. And basically the reading is about grace, God's merciful grace. And God can forgive even the worst of sinners. Our gospel today is a long one. It's uh, the story of the prodigal son plus three other parables. It's from Luke chapter 15. Tax collectors and sinners were all drawing near to listen to Jesus, but the Pharisees and scribes began to complain, saying, This man welcomes sinners and eats with them. So to them he addressed this parable. What man among you, having a hundred sheep and losing one of them, would not leave the ninety-nine in the desert and go after the lost one until he finds him? And when he does find it, he sets it on his shoulders with great joy. And upon his arrival home, he calls together his friends and neighbors and says to them, Rejoice with me, because I have found my lost sheep. I tell you, in just the same way, there will be more joy in heaven over one sinner who repents than over ninety-nine righteous people who have no repentance. Or what woman, having ten coins and losing one, would not light a lamp and sweep the house, searching carefully until she finds it? And when she does find it, she calls together her friends and neighbors and says to them, Rejoice with me, because I have found the coin that I lost. In just the same way, I tell you, there will be more rejoicing among the angels of God over one sinner. So I'm not going to read the story of the prodigal son here. Uh, if you can, I'll show you it's at another video there, and you can uh, look at the highlights of it. So this gospel, it really helps us understand that the focus isn't on the narrow door, that no one can get into heaven or few can get into heaven. But forgiveness is available to anyone who wants it. And when someone asks for forgiveness, there's nothing but joy, joy and more joy. That's the word that come in the story of the man who finds the lost sheep or the woman who finds the coin. And the image here is that God actively searches for the lost. He reaches out and tries to bring us back. And there, you know, the Pharisees and the Sadducees, and then in the story of the prodigal son, the elder son, there's resentment from those who think themselves justified by their own deeds. You know, they don't want a God who forgives. I, I want a God who punishes people, and that, but that's not the God that we have. Our God is a loving God. And, you know, and the, what caused this, uh, these parables to be told was that Jesus welcomes sinners. And that's a great lesson for all of us. If you'd like to see more about the prodigal son, please go to my video on the fourth Sunday of Lent, March 27, 2022. Again, pray for peace. And if you think this might be helpful to someone, please pass it on. Thank you very much. And please remember those who lost their lives on September 11th.